Good morning. Uh, today we are going to talk to Dr. Valentine Okwara from the Department of Education. Welcome, Dr. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. What are you currently working on? Uh, currently, I'm working on two projects. Uh, the first one is the incorporation of ads in the teaching and learning of science to make science more enticing uh, under the context of STEM education. And secondly, I have another project with the SOTL that um, I'm working on how we will get a think pay share as a group work strategy to help students who are struggling in some models with specific response to reference to LSTV 3605 and the NTTI 3604 models that are teaching. Thank you, Doctor. Can you enlighten us with regard to the difference between STEM and STEAM? Okay, you know, uh, when you look at science education, it's basically we're talking about STEM. That means science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. So STEM has been there for a very long time, and um, everything we're talking about is about the STEM and STEM fields. But most recently, in 2016, there is this new wave of interdisciplinary collaboration, where ads is needed in order to make science more fun, and that is the application of ads in the teaching and learning of science. So that gave back to STEAM, S-T-E-A-M, Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, and Mathematics. And when we look at Arts in its entirety, you know, Arts is about creativity. And when we look at science, it's not as if science doesn't have creativity, but because the way science is taught, we usually exclude that creative aspect in science. And it doesn't make science more appealing and fun. So, but if we kind of uh, leverage the creativity in arts, remember when we talk about arts, arts is an embodiment of puppetry arts, drama, music, and so on and so forth. So, if we find ways of incorporating this into science teaching and learning, it will make science more fun. So, with respect to all this, my specificity is in the area of the incorporation of puppetry arts as a teaching tool to make science more interesting. So it's still within the context of STEAM. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, what role uh, is technology playing in the field of education? Okay, when we look at the fourth industrial revolution, you know it's about technology. So we cannot divulge the field of education from technology. Technology is part and parcel of field education. So the incorporation of technology in the teaching and learning in all spheres of education is very, very important. For example, you know, if we look back at what happened during the COVID pandemic, if not for incorporation of technology, we would have lost the whole of time in terms of teaching and learning. But because we have internet, we have access to internet, and we incorporate technology in online learning, and so on and so forth, we were able to bridge that gap. Because during the lockdown, everybody is locked into the room. The only access you have to the outside world is via technology. So leveraging technology in the teaching and learning, especially in education, is very, very important. And as we see how the world is moving through the incorporation, the, 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 the currently the chat GPT and artificial intelligence, those are areas that borders on technology that will play a very important role in teaching and learning as well as in research. Because if you look at chat GPT now, you can use it to do a whole lot of things. You understand? So it's very, very important. The incorporation of technology in education, it's the way forward. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, are there any specific or exciting gaps within your field of study? Most definitely. You know, in any field of study, the essence of research is to fill in gaps. There are unanswered questions. For example, I was talking about how do we make science more fun in order to make learners interested in teaching and learning of science. That is a gap. The incorporation of ads. The creativity in arts in the teaching and learning of science is the area of research that is filling that gap. And with this filling of that gap and doing research in these areas, it becomes very, very important because the essence of research is to search for answers. And you cannot search for answers where there are no questions. And if there are no questions, it means there are no gaps. So you wouldn't be here.
So we here, because there are gaps, there are questions to be answered, and that is why we do research in order to answer those questions. So most definitely, in my field of study, in my area of specialization in science, there are gaps, most especially like we discussed earlier on off camera about the, the, the learners not being interested in science and maths. It's a gap. And science is the future. Technology is the future. So we have to make science more fun for learners in order for them to have interest in science. So that is why I'm working on STEM education. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, is there any specific uh, theory or school of thought that influence your writing? Uh, when you look at my writing, I don't have any specific uh, school of thought that influences my writing. Uh, what happens in my writing is that I look at so a whole lot of theories, for instance. For example, when I'm talking about STEM, incorporation of STEM into the teaching and learning of science, I basically look at adjunct theory of plant behavior, whereby we know that when we look at cognition, that's the teaching and learning, the, 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 the learner's ability to concentrate and to what are those things that we can use to make them concentrate. So in Ajahn's theory of plant behavior, he says that if we want to change a specific behavior, for example, attitude of learners towards science, which we intend to change using proprietary plants, if we want to change those attitudes, we have to look at those critical areas that we can incorporate those change in order to make it effective. So that is how I work. I don't have any specific depends. Like for example, like I said earlier on, in preparatory art in cooperation, I stick to Asian theory of plant behavior. Because it's not only that we want to make science more fun, but we want to change the behavior of learners towards science. And that is changing their attitudes towards science. Thank you so much, Dr. And then, what message can you share with aspiring researchers? Uh, the message I have for aspiring researchers is like, one, the field of research is full of ups and downs. So you have to embrace failure and learn from it. Don't expect to do everything right at the onset. And secondly, you have to collaborate. In research, you don't have to, you know, when you say research, you stand on the shoulders of giants in order to reach excellent heights. So you must collaborate. The third one, you must find a mentor. You must have somebody that mentors you, somebody that you look up to, somebody that inspires you, somebody that, you know, lets that flame to research burn in you. You need that. And finally, you need to uh, kind of um, communicate your findings. People must know what you write, what you're doing and what you're finding and what you have researched and what you have done and what you have published, you need to publish, so you need to communicate. So those are my advice to upcoming researchers. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then, apart from research, what are your other interests? Uh, my other interests, uh, apart from research, is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm somebody who likes nature, you know. I love areas that are very tranquil, that is noiseless per se. So I frequently, my, uh, my, my harvest and my ideal holiday resort with my family is national parks and game parks, and, you know, where I will sit and interact with nature and it inspires my writing and so on and so forth. And secondly, I'm passionate about music, you know, because when I talk about arts in science, Music is one of them. I'm passionate about music. I love music and motorsport is also my passion. Okay. Thank you so much, Doctor. And then we really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate you having me here. Thank you. Thank you so much.